Hi, it's Thursday and it's time again for a Bible study. Amen. And as usual, the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. We are in the last segment of Master Manipulators and we are looking at none other than the book of Esther. Couldn't have done this without this book of Esther included. All right. And as usual, the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the people of God with the word of God. Amen. We studied from the New Living Translation and I need you to share this on your page with other people as well so everyone can learn as we go along. So this Master Manipulator series, we have looked at Laban, we have looked at David, we have looked at Jacob. Now we're going to look at this plot in Esther. Here we go. Esther chapter 3, verse 1 to 15. We're going to start there first. Sometime later, King Xerxes promoted Haman, son of Amadeus the Agite, over all the other nobles, making him the most powerful official in the empire. All the king's officials would bow down before Amon to show him respect whenever he passed by. For so the king had commanded. But Mordecai refused to bow down or show him respect. And we know Mordecai was a Jew and Esther's uncle, right? Then the palace officials at the king's gate asked Mordecai, Why are you disobeying the king's command? They spoke to him day after day, but he still refused to comply with the order. So they spoke to Haman about this to see if he would tolerate Mordecai's conduct, since Mordecai had told them he was a Jew. When Haman saw, so so in other words, Mordecai told them that I am not bowing down to any man because I'm a Jew. I only bow down to God. So. The guards are now asking Haman, is that okay with you? Because he's saying, because he's a Jew, he's not going to bow down, right? So verse five says, when Haman saw that Mordecai would not bow down or show him respect, he was filled with rage. He had learned of Mordecai's nationality. So he decided it was not enough to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Instead, he looked for a way to destroy all the Jews throughout the entire empire of Xerxes. So in the month of April, during the 12th year of King Xerxes' reign, lots were cast in Haman's presence. The lots were called Purim to determine the best day and month to take action. And the day selected was March 7th, nearly a year later. Then Haman approached King Xerxes and said, there is a certain race of people. Here comes the manipulation. Because remember now, we're in the manipulation series. So he comes now in verse 8 is where he starts to manipulate the king. Because he wanted revenge taken against Mordecai because Mordecai wouldn't bow down to him and his ego couldn't stand it, right? So let's go. Verse 8. And Haman approached King Xerxes and said, There's a certain race of people scattered through, through all the providence of your empire who keep themselves separate from everyone else. The laws are different from those of any other people, and they refuse to obey the laws of the king. So it is not the king. So it is not in the king's interest to let them live. That's it right there in a nutshell. Here is a manipulation, right? If it pleases the king, issue a decree that they will be destroyed, and I will give 10 thousand large sacks of silver to the government administration to be to be deposited in the royal treasury now really why would the king even need a bribe oh come on somebody but he was so determined and so upset and so his ego was so in deflated every time mordecai wouldn't bow down to him that he would give up ten thousand of his own coins right so let's go on to verse 10. The king agreed, confirming his decision by removing his signet ring from his finger and giving it to Haman, so son of Hamadah, a guy, the enemy of the Jews. The king said, the money and the people are both yours to do with 
as you see fit. So it was April 7th, 17th, the king's secretaries were summoned and the decree was written exactly as Haman dictated. It was sent to the king's highest officers, the governors of the respective provinces and the nobles of each province in their own scripts and languages. So he made sure all stones were turned over. Nobody can say they never heard this new decree. That nobody couldn't say it wasn't sent to them in their own language, no less. He made sure that it was done in every language. So there was no excuse. Oh, come on, somebody. He was that angry. And that ticked off. And his ego was that squelched by the fact that one man wouldn't bow down to him. It's a sad situation. Verse 13. Dispatches were sent by swift messengers. Oh, wait, let me go back and do 12 again. And on April the 17th, the king's secretaries were summoned and a decree was written exactly as Haman dictated. It was sent to the king's highest officers, the governors of the respective provinces, and the nobles of each province in their own scripts and languages. The decrees were, were was written in the name of King Xerxes and sealed with the king's signet ring. Dispatches were sent by swift messengers into all the provinces of the empire, given the order that all Jews, young and old, including women and children, must be killed slaughtered and annihilated on a single day. This was scheduled to happen on March 7th of the next year. The property of the Jews would be given to those who killed them. A copy of the decree was to, was to be issued as law in every province and, and proclaimed to all peoples so that they would be ready to do their duty on the appointed day. At the king's command, the decree went out by swift messengers and it was also proclaimed in the forest of Susa. Then the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the king of Susa fell into confusion. All right. So that is the manipulation. The consequences we're going to see next. So well, let's go to Esther chapter 8, verse 5 to 17. And again. We're in the master manipulation series. So he manipulated the king, right? Because his ego was bruised. He applied his strategy to the, the ego of the king as well. And now here we are. This decree has gone out. So here goes Esther chapter 8, verse 5 to 17. Esther said, if it pleased the king... And if I have found favor with him, and if he thinks it is right, and if I am pleasing to him, let there be a decree that reverses the orders of Haman, son of Amadatha the Agite, who ordered that Jews throughout all the king's provinces should be destroyed. For how can I endure to see my people and my family slaughtered and destroyed? So Esther now is pulling rank as first lady of the house. Come on, somebody. She is asking the king to undo or reverse the decree because she has heard about it. She had an audience with him. She has fasted and prayed. So now this is what she's asked. But now let's go on to verse seven. Then King Xerxes said to Esther and Mordecai the Jew, I have given Esther the property of Haman and he has been impaled. Oh, listen to this. On a pole. Because he tried to destroy the Jews. The consequences to manipulation can be sometime very bad. What goes around comes around. Verse 8. Now go ahead and send a message to the Jews in the king's name. Telling them whatever you want and seal it with the king's signet ring. But remember that whatever has already been written in the king's name and sealed with a signet ring can never be revoked. So back then, when a decree was set up and sent out, it cannot be revoked. So the, you, you can uh, make an addendum and add, but you can't revoke what was originally written. So verse 9 says, So on June 25th, the king's secretaries were summoned and a decree was written exactly as Mordecai dictated. 
it was sent to the Jews and the highest officers, the governors, and the nobles of all 127 provinces stretching from India to Ethiopia. The decree was written in the scripts and languages of all the peoples of the empire, including that of the Jews. The decree was written in the name of King Xerxes and sealed with the king's signet ring. Mordecai sent the dispatches by swift messengers who rode fast horses, especially bred for the king's service. The king's decrees gave the Jews in every city authority to unite to defend their lives. They were allowed to kill, slaughter, and annihilate anyone of any nationality or province who might attack them or their children and wives and to take the property of their enemies. The day chosen for this event throughout all the province of King Xerxes was March 7th of the next year. A copy of this decree was to be issued as law in every province and proclaimed to all people so that the Jews would be ready to take revenge on their enemies on the appointed day. So urged on by the king's command, the messengers rode out swiftly on fo and fast horses bred for the king's service. The same decree was also proclaimed in the forest of Susa. Then Mordecai left king's presence wearing the royal robe of blue and white. Oh, come on, somebody. The great crown of gold and an outer cloak of fine linen and purple. And the people of Susa celebrated the new decree. The Jews were filled with joy and gladness and were honored everywhere, in every province and every city, wherever the king's decree arrived. The Jews rejoiced and had a great celebration and declared a public festival and holiday. And many of the people of the land became Jews themselves, for they feared the Jews might do for they feared what the Jews might do to them. Alright now. So one of the things that also happened to Haman was he ended up giving Mordecai robe, a ring, and marched him through the city with the fine horses and a parade because he was so conceited he thought that was the thing that the king Xerxes was going to do for him. But it was actually for Mordecai. So I encourage you to read some more in that book of Esther and really get the full gist of it. I just got some of the highlights for, you know, because of time so that you can get an idea of what goes on. But manipulation was the trick of trade for Mordecai. He wanted to, you know, do all these things, um, or should I say, Haman wanted to do those things to Mordecai because Mordecai refused to bow down and he manipulated King Xerxes. So lessons from the manipulator. God is not asleep, people of God. He's not asleep. He will always show up and defend his people. I want you to know that. As sure as the sun sets tomorrow, God will show up and defend his people. Second lesson. When we are looking at what man is doing, God has the answer already sent. Third lesson. God is always ahead of the game. He's always ahead of the game. So it doesn't matter what we're doing. God is ahead of the game working it all out for good. Fourth lesson. Make sure to stay in a mode of thanksgiving. Because let me tell you, saints, if you are always being thankful for everything that you have, for all that God is doing, and for what God's going to do in the future, then you have no time to complain. You have no time to belly ache, and you have no time to stay in distress. We are alive right now because God allowed it. God is not finished with us yet because if he was, he wouldn't have brought us into 2024. Do what you have in your control and leave the rest to God. Proverbs 21, 6 says, wealth created by lying tongues is, a va is vanishing mist and a deadly trap. 1 Thessalonians 4, 6 says, never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter, amen, because he is always there to avenge. Deuteronomy 32 verse 35 says, I will take revenge 
I will pay them back in due time. Their feet will slip. Their day of disaster will arrive and their destiny will overtake them. Ephesians 6, 16 to 17 says, In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. If we are practicing the word of God, if we're hearing the word of God, we haven't got time to be out there getting into mischief and to manipulating people, right? Romans 15, 13 says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm, mm, mm. And lastly, Micah 6, 8 says, No, O people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you. To do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. We ain't got time to be manipulating people. We have to be busy about the kingdom of God, to be walking in the spirit, to teach others about the story, about who God is and leading them to Christ. And if that's not what we're doing, we need a check up from the neck up. Because when he breaks that cloud, you want to be caught up to meet him in the sky. You don't want to be left back here with all the other master manipulators. You want to be with Christ for everlasting joy and everlasting peace. And with that, we're going to go to prayer. We're praying for Lydia, Ayana, Emmett, Starlet, Giovanni, our and Shekhar for family, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra, Graves, Georgette, Norma Reed, Anthony Walker, Walker family, Elijah Echo, Don Cosby, Lee McGee, Marie Rice, Patrick Linton, Deacon Isabel Roberts, We've got two James, we've got Harris family, Pastor Teal, Leonie Walker, Mario French, Romario French, Michael Moore, Grace Appleby, Lee Mullins, Marlene, Franklin, Brown, Wright family, Karen and Charles Thomas. We're praying for America, we're praying for all over this world that's in wars. Wars and uh, non-ceasing and just incredible things that's going on. Let's pray. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, your people come right now, Father God, surrendering everything to you. As we've studied this month about manipulators, help us to see us, see our hearts and our minds the way you see us. Help us to repent of anything that we do that's not of you, Father God. Help us to stay pure and clean, Lord God. We surrender all of us to you for kingdom building business. As we walk and as we go, help us to reflect Jesus. We thank you for all that you're doing even now, God. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. And we thank you ahead of time. We're going to have a thankful spirit. We thank you ahead of time, Father God for what you will have us to do. It's in Jesus' holy and matchless name we pray. And we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, children of God. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And I'll see you next Thursday, God's willing. Be blessed. Bye-bye now.